Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another BIM video. In this video we will be having a look at the similarities and the differences between traditional CAD and BIM. Specifically I will be looking at how Revit, a BIM platform, is different to AutoCAD, a traditional CAD software. We need to first understand what Revit is. Revit is simply a platform that allows you to deliver your project using BIM. So it enables you to create a digital representation of the project, both visually and data-wise. When I say data-wise, what I mean is that all the information that are associated with each element in the project, including unit costs, supplier information, material information, etc., is all incorporated into that one model. So Revit is not a 3D visualization tool. It can be used to provide a 3D visual, but its use is much more than that. Uh, apart from embedding different data sets in your project, a BIM platform such as Revit allows you to perform all sorts of analysis, including an automated quantity takeoff. You can also perform environmental analysis on it, as well as structural analysis, which is important for uh, your structural engineers in the project. Now, it is very easy then to share the project with various stakeholders um, once you have that developed uh, in Revit. So for instance, the engineers can collaborate with the architects using the same Revit files, uh, and they can each access, edit, and review changes all at the same time from that one uh, model. It's, as a result, it's easier to uh, coordinate between all these different parties that are involved in a project. And most BIM platforms, including Revit, rely on object-based modeling. This is where various attributes of information and data become integrated with a single element in a project. For example, if you have a concrete beam in your project, this can be modeled in Revit based on geometric data so when I say geometric data, I mean size and shape, along with data related to the concrete strength, the concrete supplier, and the concrete costs. So it's all of these data that are embedded together. I have an example for you to demonstrate precisely how Revit and AutoCAD differ. Um, if you consider a house, for instance, if you want to construct one, then there are various components of that building, and you need to link, say, for instance, the walls the slabs and the beams in that house together to form the overall structure. Now, traditionally in AutoCAD, how you do that is by drawing lines, polylines, circles and arcs, all of which are 2D uh, in such a way that they somehow represent a particular object. So your slab, your wall, uh, etc. In Revit, it's different because you insert the specific object. So the fully constructed object, such as the wall, uh, is placed in the model. And that is instead of drawing it out via lines, uh, just like you would have done in AutoCAD. You then link that inserted object with other objects representing other elements in the building. In order to form the overall structure, you have to have a perfect link between all these objects in your model. Notice that in Revit, the object that is placed uh, is, is sort of within a holistic model. Whereas in AutoCAD, you construct the individual objects, so the walls and the floors, from simple lines or polar lines or sometimes circles. The objects in Revit, they're data rich in that they have information embedded within the specific object, so within the wall, um, you've got data that's related to its geometry, its materials, uh, cost, who supplies the various materials involved. This is not the case in AutoCAD, where your lines and polar lines do not contain any information about the materials or the costs. Another example is presented uh, in front of you on the screen. If you place a window in your project and you're using AutoCAD for that, if you change the mullion, say, of the window, that would require you to change it for all the views. Uh, so for in elevation, section, and detail. In Revit, a change in any one of these views results in an automatic update of all the other views for that object. 
So you don't have to worry about manually changing each and every single uh, sheet or view that you have. You thus do not have to repeat. Uh, it saves you heaps of time and you can examine uh, other alternatives uh, for the object, knowing that you don't have to worry about going through this tedious process of constantly updating the geometry uh, of each of the sheets uh, that you have in your project. As I had explained earlier, Revit relies on this concept that's known as object-based modeling, OBM. This is where all the building objects are intelligent. In that, for instance, your walls and floors, they're differentiated since each one represents a different object. So a wall is, of course, different than a floor. Your wall would have several, several layers, for instance, you know, insulation, plasterboard, masonry maybe on the outside, while your floor can just be composed of a 300 mil concrete slab. For each of these objects, there are different sizes, they have different materials, and hence each of these objects in our example, so the wall and the floor, they have different information associated with them. And that's what's referred to as uh, object attributes. The information that's associated with each object can be split into either physical information or parametric information when we're talking about objects in BIM. Physical information is uh, related to information or data of the object that cannot be uh, changed. So it's usually fixed, that's how you have to think about it. An example would be creating a family uh, in your Revit file, such as a table that has fixed dimensions and which is not able to be extended or reduced in size. In parametric information, on the other hand, you as the person modeling uh, this object can change the parameters associated with it. So for instance, if you have a parametric model of a column, you can extend the column and this will automatically extend the height dimensions of the column. Other parameters can also be changed if it's parametric. Uh, for instance, in the column you can change the material type that you use, so you can have steel or concrete columns, uh, information on its cost and suppliers, etc. All of that can be changed if, it's, if it is parametric. And such uh, parametric modeling is not available in traditional CAD tools such as AutoCAD. So if you want to do that, then you have to do it in a BIM platform such as Revit. Another example of uh, parametric modeling in, in your BIM platform would involve, say, for instance, a case where you had seven columns with paint. If you wanted to change the paint on one of these columns and you desire that the columns all be exactly the same, then doing it for one of the columns will automatically update all the columns that are in your project. Again, another example is if, say, for instance, you had a wall in your uh, BIM project and you wanted to extend that from 5 to 10 meters. This can be done by simply dragging the endpoint of the wall. All the data that's related to the length, say, for example, your area and the volume of the wall, would update automatically. Due to this embedded uh, data in each object, rule checks can be conducted on the object. So, this would include all sorts of analysis, such as structural analysis, environmental analysis on your BIM model, and that's why you have various dimensions involved in BIM, and this is not possible in AutoCAD. Here's another example of how OBM behaves. Uh, this is more of a simplified example. So if you have a concrete beam, uh, it's got materials, uh, geometry, costs associated with it, and all of these can be parametric. So if I decrease or increase the size of the beam, all the attributes that impact uh, this specific parameter, so the length, will automatically be updated in Revit. And this is not possible in AutoCAD. One last thing to note, and I will need to stress this, is that Revit is not a 3D visualization of your project. It's actually a misconception that is very common in the industry. You can use Revit to build a 3D view of your project, but Revit is not only used for visualization. A BIM model is intelligent. It is based on parametric modeling. It has information 
embedded in each instance of an object in the project. You can conduct an automated quantity takeoff, for instance, using it. You can also conduct all sorts of analysis that are related to uh, your building. You can even simulate the construction process as we've seen in 4D BIM. And that can be achieved by linking a construction schedule with your model. There's also this important thing that uh, is, is very helpful and that is clash detection. So clash detections can be done automatically if you're using BIM. Um, so if, if you think about it, all these functions that I just listed, these are all very important functions for us uh, to be able to do quickly when we have a construction project. They can be extremely time consuming. So imagine if you're using a traditional way of delivering a project such as CAD, um, it's just going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of people might miss some of the important updates that they had to do manually. So that's why it's beneficial to use uh, BIM for project deliveries. Okay, so that was all for this video, folks. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash the like button. I will see you all in another video soon. Cheers.